it's been a fantastic evening. It's been a beautiful sharing. But there is a man who probably his story is just amazing. Not just in probably how it's written, but most likely in how it is said and how it's perceived in whichever angle. And if there is any single day that you felt there is darkness in a room, when you get close to him, the darkness turns into light. Because in his life on earth, where there was darkness and he stepped feet, light started shining. And today, we are humbled to have him as our guest of honor. Allow me, at this moment in time, invite past district governor, Emmanuel Katongole, to make his remarks. Thank you, my brother, Chatter President Samuel. And fellow Rotarians uh, recognized the leadership of Rotary. But let me very sincerely thank my sister and friend, President Mabel. You call her amazing, and indeed she's amazing. And my daughter here, for according me the opportunity to come and share this great evening with you. At first, I was very skeptical because I've got lots of travels, I've been up and down. But then coming in here and you find friends, friends you've known, Mebras, Mebra. You know, Mebra has been a very amazing leader. He'll die. You see, Elizabeth, uh, leaders of this club, you know, it, it tells volumes. Then you find another great leader here, Flavia. By the way, Flavia has elevated the position of women in Rotary in this country to levels that are unimaginable. But, but friends, don't think that my friends are only ladies, though I really love ladies. <laughs> I, I, I have friends like Charles and all of you, you know, being Rotarians serving and serving and serving. When you see Beatrice, Honorable Beatrice Rajmali, very respected, very decent lady in whatever she does in parliament and all. You, you really feel her. You, you really feel her. You really feel her. A person like Reverend Nathan here. Reverend Nathan is a man of God. He is a man of God. If there were, if people like Emmanuel Katongole were the ones give, uh, appointing bishops, probably I would appoint him a bishop. <laughs> but two things come to my mind. Two things come to my mind. One was the year 1992-93, when the late Adrian Sibo was your president. And may he rest in peace. The theme then was real friendship is in helping others. Real friendship is in helping others. Just imagine what inspires Reverend Nathan, what inspires Beatrice, Mebra, Charles, and you, you know, to spend their time and say we're going to serve and we shall be there in Rotary. Also reminds me one man called Chinu Achebe. I'm not an arts man. I, my life has always been in sciences. And if I had stayed that, I would be getting the salary increase, which would be doubled. Uh, uh, but Chinu Achebe said when you see a man, and we're a man, by the way, ladies are also called man. Yeah? When you see a man leaving their homes to come and share a meal, it is not because they do not have meals at their homes. When you see one coming to your home 
and sharing the mood night of Africa in the open, it is not because they cannot see the moon in their homes. It is because we are family. It is because we are family united by one thing, service above self. It is what inspires us. And for me, the Rotary Club of March India has got a number of friends. But that is not what pushes me to my knees. What pushes me to my knees is your ability to go and touch someone's lives. Is your ability to do what Edward has been doing, serving to change lives. It's the ability of what you've done. And I remember when I was with district governor and my sister, Dr. Salam Konge, was president. You... You launched and she led, she led the way and you launched the Mama Kid project. The Mama Kid project that was launched that year and I launched it when she was president Almost every club today talks about Mama Kitty and how they are giving these kids to help women deliver. That is what inspires us as Rotarians. That's what makes us get out of blankets. That's what makes us say, let me leave whatever I'm doing and go to the Rotary Club of Machi India. Our incoming president, Jennifer Jones talks of something called DEI, D-E-I, diversity, equity, and inclusion. If there is a club in this country that I know that prices, that really practices DEI, is the Rotary Club of Much India. And I know I'll tell you why I really think so. I've visited almost every club in East Africa and many in Africa. But clubs tend to have a cocoon. Emmanuel Katongole comes from Mukono, you do projects in Mukono. I am a president from uh, Abiretoy, you only go to Abiretoy. The Rotary Club of Makinde has changed three diverse districts. Kabera Maido, Ntungamo, and Yumbe. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the work that you have done in Kabera Maido? The Mama Kid project that you took to that health center and the work that you're doing in that health center in Kabera Maido? And when my friend, and when my friend, Bernadette. She's not here, but I've seen the husband. You know Bernadette and the husband are inseparable. Same height, same everything. Uh, wh where is David? Uh, you come, you come. You see, I haven't seen Bernadette, but you, they, they look the same. They look like brothers and sisters, you know? When Bernadette was president, I came and I, I supported her to do a project uh, called Support Girl Child. Eh? Support a, a Girl Child. I don't remember the title, but it was along those lines. Keep a Girl Child in School. This project has left the Rotary Club of Machindie, gone to national level, and it won you a very big diamond shield as a club. Please. This is what empowers us. That you can get a girl to be in school and no matter that about 90% of our coming leadership are women. And for me, when it comes to women, it is so special. It is so special because I grew up in a family of women. My father dying when I was only four years of age. Poor people in the village, ransacked house. Nothing. People like Edward here, I think, started putting on underwear as when they were two days old. For us, we had to wait until we were about 20, but somehow. <laughs> Mebra says that's why we are men. <laughs> 
let me tell you, when I stayed with my mother who could not read and write, and my sisters were pulled out of that grass such school, treasured school, to put me in school, and they all eventually died and I stayed alone. Women died for me and I'll die for them. And that is why I am excited to chair the visit of Jennifer Jones. And that's why whenever I meet Jennifer Jones, I say, hey girl, this is our time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And I believe that the future of this world is going to be powered up by women. Because whatever they do, they do with perfectionism. They do it with commitment. When you give them a job, they don't steal. They don't, you know. So, thank you. Thank you for that project of keeping a girl in school. I remember when I was governor, I visited Kumi. And I was told that girls are dropping out of school. I asked the reason. Can you believe that they told me that it is because they don't have knickers? And when they go to play, you just imagine what we call kwepena. And a girl without, uh, without a knicker does kwepena. And <laughs> Can you imagine? For Charles Kabunga, if, if he goes and says, Whoa, they say, eh? <laughs> But a, a lady, my girl, must be respected. A girl must be respected. And these girls could not go because when people saw them kind of naked, they, they ran away and they said, I'm not going back. And we started buying knickers, buying knickers, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. And three years later, I was told that enrollment in school for girls because of knickers had improved by 80%. That is what we do. Just imagine you crossed from Kabera Maido and went to Ntungamo. You equipped that health center by buying a mobile van. There is a very false thinking in this country. And it is very false because I know and I travel across this country. People think that in Western Uganda everyone is rich. It is not true at all. It is not true at all. There are people in Western Uganda who are suffering like people in Uganda or people in Northern Uganda. But there are also people in, Northern, in Western Uganda who are privileged like people in Central, Eastern or Northern. But those underprivileged you bought for them an ambulance, a van, which is fully equipped, my brother, assistant governor, uh, incoming governor, eh? just imagine. You give to those who are left, they are excluded. They are excluded from the cake. Beatrice Rakimali and the leadership here says, let's do it, and you do it. And them too have got hope. That is the hope we are looking for as Rotarians. Leaders are dealers in hope. That when a child is born, will not risk of dying malaria or dying of malaria. When a child is born, will be immunized against immunizable diseases. That is what the Rotary Club of Machinda is doing. You crossed all the way from Ntungamo, you went to Yumbe. Yumbe, for those of you who have not been there, when you go there, you will think this is the end of the world. No water. People drinking bitaba. Bitaba is what? Ponds. Water from ponds. But you went there and drilled four wells and people pick water for as high as two kilometers and come and they pick water from your wells and they call it rotary water. But it's not on the Rotary Club of Machin. They look at the projects that we've been doing. Probably the most, most effective project or program we've ever undertaken is polio. Polio. Look at what 
you Rotarians have done to polio. 35 years ago, polio had stagnated all over the world. About half a million people, irrespective of color or gender, were suffering. I've seen Americans, the richest country in the world, who suffered from polio, and they are more deformed than Africans. But Rodney said, we can solve this problem. You have been contributing, you've been immunizing children, and the result is that last year, there were less than 10 polio cases in the world, and in your lifetime, you are going to hear a declaration of saying Rotarians in the world eliminated one of the most deadliest diseases from the first of the world. <laughs> that is what makes us proud. That's why I think one time was it in Bangkok or Sydney, I, I met Elizabeth Ruge and I asked her, but Elizabeth, you a banker? You, you have everything? You have the money? You have the good looks? Uh, 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 What keeps you there? What keeps you there? And she said, you know, when I see a child being immunized, when I see someone who does not have water, having a glass of water, that makes my day. I said, that makes my day as well. Here in Uganda, I run one of the biggest pharmaceutical manufacturing facility in this country. Not in this country, on this continent. We export our medicines for HIV, AIDS, and malaria to 22 countries in Africa. And let me tell you, we have been able to reduce the number of people dying of malaria in 15 years from 400 every day to less than 50, and our dream is to get to zero. We have increased the number of people getting treatment. And God forbid if Emmanuel got HIV AIDS, you never die like a pauper. You don't die like my sisters died. My two sisters died because of HIV AIDS. And I saw them really suffering and they died like dogs on the street. Today, we provided that because we are Rotarians. Over one million people in this country access treatment. And the government should be proud of this. I don't know why they don't talk about achievements. Always we hear of negative things, negative things. Yet the government has done so many good things, but people don't talk about them. But that's not the issue. The issue, AIDS, malaria, is no longer the biggest problem because we've handled it. Cancer. Today is the biggest problem in this country. Biggest problem. When you go to the Cancer Institute in Mulago, you cry. You cry. But you Rotarians said, no, we must be the answer to the problem. And you started building a cancer center at Insambia Hospital. And as I speak, it is really taking care of cancer patients in a more decent way. You run. Every year you run to, to, to build a bank, and now two bankers are being built because of you Rotarians. A banker is something that is very expensive, probably $1.52 million. It's approved by the International Nuclear Facility. You run and build this and make sure that in our time, nobody will die of cancer like a pauper. And the biggest run this year is going to be Prague flagged off by Jennifer Jones, our president. On the 4th of September will be a Sunday. Go and run. Go and run. And when you run, cancer goes out of the way. You've built peace. You know peace is not necessarily the absence of war. But now, you because of the inspiration of you Rotarians in Uganda, you have brought a Rotary Peace Center at Makerere University. And that is what is going to bring President Jennifer to say, let's do peace. Let's have peace in the world. Let these peace scholars at Makerere University travel across Africa 
and make sure that what we are seeing on social media from DR Congo, Eastern DR Congo, do not happen. We saw it happen in Rwanda. It should never happen again. And Rotarians should play a very important role to that. So fellow Rotarians, when I speak about what we do, what the Rotary Club of Machinde has done and what Mabel plans to do, that makes my day. Continue. Continue doing that. And for you, Mabel, and Priska, I am not a football fan. Actually, I don't watch football. I fail to watch football. I am not. But I like that there is some English team that has a phrase says, you will never walk alone. I want to tell you that Priska and Mebo will not walk alone. We shall all be there to back you up. At least count me as number one. We'll back you up so that year and year, year on and year out, you increase the level of capacity and the participation of Rotarians in making the world a better place to live in. But remember, we need more hands to do the job. We need more hands. And when I read from by default yesterday that Mebra has been appointed the district membership chair, I said, oh yeah, Machinde is going to double. Double. It's a question of inviting. I have invited Mr. Abigaba and I am going to follow up on him. It is a question of inviting whoever you feel and your mind tells you that this person can be a very good Rotarian. Invite them. Don't enjoy the cake alone. Share it with others. These amazing things that we do, we must share with others. Don't say Maki India is too big to grow. My club has got 170 members and we are still growing. When I was governor, her club, the Rotary Club of Nalia, were less than 10 members. And when I visited, I said, no, we're not going to talk about anything except membership. We sat down on the table and started cutting, cutting the cake and sharing it. And by the time I finished the year, they won the trophy of membership growth. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's support our foundation. Let's do those little things that we do. The money that you give, poor Harris fellows. You know, Mother Teresa said, if you cannot feed a hundred, feed one. Feed one. If you cannot be an Arch Club Society member like I am, be a major donor. If you can't be a major donor, be a poor Harris fellow. If you can't be a poor Harris fellow, just be, contribute a hundred dollars. If you can't do a hundred dollars, contribute one dollar. That is what it takes to humanize a child. And that's what it takes to humanize a child. This, there was a lady who was, uh, kept coming to the desk and sorry to, to touch this. And I was saying, oh, but you are the guest of honor. Why don't you have a glass of wine? I, I said, tonight I'll have water. But you know that this glass of wine can immunize 10 children? Skip one. Skip one tonight. And say this will go to the Rotary Foundation and I'll make a change in people's lives. So as I get down, let me tell you our president. Amazing, imaginative, everything. You see Jennifer Jones, who can, Flavia, come on, sir. Aha. If you want to see Jennifer Jones, about her, same height, same everything. I think even the looks. <laughs> Jennifer Jones is coming here for peace. On 2nd of September, 
I invite all of you to come and share a meal with her. Physical sharing will go for $100. Contribute that. That will help us to arrange. But make history by being there. Get your $100 and be there with Jennifer Jones. Jennifer Jones is now a phenomenal. First in 117 years. Spare that $100. Come and be with her. But if you cannot be there, contribute a hundred dollars to the foundation in your own names in favor of peace and you will attend this function virtually. Do one of the two. Participate and say I was there. 1969 I was a village boy and the first pop to come to Africa came and in the, our whole village there was no TV, there was no but I moved to the nearest radio which was about 10 miles away someone had a radio 10 miles away to sit and listen and listen, I said yeah, Yureka, I was there be there continue doing those things that make the world a better place to live in because when you do them and you give help you'll create many Emmanuels. I had nothing. Completely nothing. First time to travel in a car. I was 14 years of age. But someone helped me. Someone helped me. Today I am spending millions of dollars to help others because someone helped me. <laughs> Go out and help someone. Go out and help someone. Don't you mind whether you should know them? This afternoon, I met someone who says, oh, son, she just knelt down and said, thank you for paying school fees for my brother. I said, which brother? He told me. He said, okay, I've paid school fees for more than 300 people, and I don't know where they are. I don't know who is their father or their mother, but that gives me happiness. Let's do it. And once we make the world a better place to live in, our children and the children of our children will say that that was their finest hour. They will say that those men and women called Rotarians did not live for nothing. They will say that's, that those men and women participated and built a peaceful and better world to live in. Go out and serve. Go out and imagine. God bless you all.